If you guys need help using the MPC software, I now offer live video help sessions via Skype. I cover everything from how to sample inside of the MPC software easily to how to make your own beats from scratch. I also offer help on constructing, arranging, and mixing your own full tracks. So check the link in the video description, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. What's up, guys? This is your boy DZD, a.k.a. the Drink Kang Purple World Entertainment, live from the Dungeon Palace Studios once again. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. This is going to be a very quick video just to show you guys four things inside of the MPC software that helped me out in my workflow. Awesomely amazing things that if you get good at these quick, simple things, then it's going to start to cut down on your workflow tremendously. The reason why taking so long in projects can become a problem is because we do a lot of simple things over and over again. So something simple that takes just a minute to do, if you do it 10 times, that's literally 10 minutes that you've taken just doing that specific thing. But if you know a few simple things and a few shortcuts inside of your software, then that simple thing that only takes a minute becomes just one minute. But without saying too much, I'm gonna jump right inside the MPC software and show you just a few things that helped me out. Okay, the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is labeling tracks. Now, very simply, um, I see a lot of people, what they do is they go up here to the track and they just pick whatever track that they want here and then they label it by double clicking and then you can label it whatever you want. And then you hit this drop down arrow and you go to the next track, double click it and you can label it whatever you want. That's fine and good, but there's also a very simple shortcut to labeling your tracks. And this just requires you to switch screens when you do it. But what you do is you go up here to the track view screen and this is where you can label your tracks. Every single track that I click on, it now puts it here. If I switch, it changes it here. If I switch to track three, it changes it to track three here. So now you have a good view of all of your tracks, hence the name track view. But what you can do is you can label your tracks from here. You can just click on them here and you can label them. And doing this cuts out the extra step of hitting this drop down arrow right here. All you're doing is just going to your different tracks. So let's go on and label these tracks real quick. Okay, I know track one is my drum track, so let's label that drums, okay? Track two is my piano melody, okay? Track three is my flute, okay? Track four is my 808, and track five is my pad. There you are, now I've just labeled tra five tracks just that quick, and it didn't take me but about 30 seconds to do it. So just labeling tracks here from the track view will absolutely cut down on you labeling all of your tracks. As I said, we do this type of thing over and over in our projects. So finding a way to cut down on how you do those things over and over can definitely save your time in your workflow. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna talk to you guys about is layering sounds. And this works particularly well with your drum programming. But let's go to track one, that's our drum track, let's do that. And I have my sounds here. Okay, that's all of my sounds inside of this beat. So what if I wanted to layer some sounds on top of sounds? Well, what I can do is I can go here to my file browser and I can grab any one of my sounds. Let's layer a hi-hat sound. So we're gonna find a close hi-hats. Let's say I wanna layer this hi-hat sound. See, what I can do is I can hold shift and while I drag it, I can drag it to the pad and you see what it does it lights up red and it allows me to drop that hi-hat right underneath it so now i have this sound okay this is without it and this is with it okay and what happens is when you layer your sounds like that just by holding shift and dragging them to the pad if you go here to your program edit screen and you select that pad, this is where they're layered. I have my first hi-hat sound here. I have my second hi-hat sound here. And now what you can do is you can lower the volume of them. You can even pitch them if you like to try and get a specific sound if you want. So I can pitch these any way I want to fit the vibe of the beat that I'm creating. So just layering your sounds in this method gives you total control over how you want your sounds to be once you layer them. And also if I wanna take it off, all I do is just go here to the arrow and hit none and it deletes it right here. So now I'm back to that hi-hat. So layering your sounds using a shift and drag like this 
it will give you that flexibility. So that's just a quick tip. Just hold shift and drag your sounds to the pad. They will layer and they will populate right here on your program edit. So instead of working in your main page right here and dragging your sounds to the pad, just go to your program edit and drag them in from there. And you can work with every single thing that you want to work with right inside of the screen. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about is the quick save feature. Now, we all know that our computers can crash at any time. And if you haven't saved your beat, then you pretty much lose it. It's happened to me and I'm more than sure it's happened to a lot of you guys out there. But the NPC offers a, a unique feature. It's called quick save. So let's go to up here to the three lines. We're going to go to edit and we're going to go to preference. And we're going to go down here to project load save. Right here, what you can do is you can turn on what's called auto save right here. And if you hit enabled, you can pick when you want your project to automatically save. So you can pick one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and every one of these increments, your project will automatically save inside of the NPC software. So for those of you guys that work pretty quickly, you may want to pick something like five minutes. For those of you guys that work kind of slow, you may want to pick something like two minutes. That way, anything you do inside of the NPC, it always saves at a certain point in time and you don't even have to do it for yourself. You still will have the option to hit Control and S to save anytime you want, but this will automatically save your project just in case you forget to do so yourself. As I said, I've been making beats inside of this software and all of a sudden the lights go out, power outage, something happens and I can lose my project at any given time. So enabling this quick save feature is an absolute help and helps you always have your project saved at some point in time. Now you may lose a few things that you've done, but at least you do not lose your whole entire project. So the quick save feature is amazing. This is something that's very seldom used, but it can absolutely benefit you if you work very quickly in your software and you don't want to have to worry about saving your project. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the copy and pasting. This is something that I do a lot of inside of the NPC software, especially when I'm working on my laptop and I'm just working with the software. I do a lot of copying, pasting, deleting, selecting all things like that. That way I can move very quickly through my session. So I'm going to show you just a few little sequences of events that you can go through. That way you can develop a certain pattern of when you copy and save. So to do that, we're going to go over here to our track view once again. OK, now our track view. As we click on a track, it gives us the tracks down here. It lets us see what tracks that we're using. So if I click on the flute track, I have that here. If I click on the 808 track, I have that down here. If I click on the pad track, I have that down here. So what if I wanted to take this pad track and move it to the next track? I have it on track five. So the next track would be track six. I'm gonna show you how to get that done very simply. So the first thing you would do is hit control A to select all. That means it's going to select all of the notes and then you hit control C the copy. Now it's on my clipboard. Now I'm going to hit control right bracket to go over to the next track. And then I'm going to hit control V to paste. Now I have this on track six. So once again, it's control A to select all control C to copy control right bracket to go to the next track and control V to paste. And if you get into that sequence, you're going to move very, very quickly, very, very quickly through your session. I'm going to show you how quick it is. Let's do it again. So let's delete it. Let's go back to the pad track. This is how quick it can be. There it is. Just like that. I have it. I have it done on the track. That was no more than one second, maybe two. So as I said, that's the purpose of this video, just to show you the things that you do a lot of inside of your session. If you find shortcuts to do it, they won't take that long to get done. Now I'm going to show you how to move a track. This was just how to copy from one track to the next. If I want to copy notes from one track to the next, I'm going to show you how to actually move a track. And it's just it just requires one more step in between everything. OK, so let's go back to the pad track. We're going to move this pad track to track six instead of copying it. Okay, so you would hit control A to select all, control C to copy, and then before you do anything else, all you do is hit delete, and it's gonna delete that. Now you hit control right bracket, and you go over and hit control V to paste it. Now instead of copying, I delete it. This is track five, it's deleted, and this 
this track fixed. I have now moved my MIDI information to the next track. And all I have to do is now just go here and change the program to whatever I want it to be. That's it. So just that quick, I can move tracks around in my software if I want. I can take the piano melody track and I can put it down here on track five where I moved the pad from. Let's do that very quickly again. Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then I'm gonna delete it. And then I'm gonna go up here, hit the pad track, and then I'm gonna hit Control V to paste. And now I have just moved my information from one track to the next. So it's very simple. And if you get used to this little sequence, then you're gonna get used to copying and pasting and moving your tracks around in your software very, very quickly, and you don't have any holdups when doing so. That's it, guys. Those are the four things that I wanted to show you inside of the software. Now, this may seem very simple, but that was the purpose of this video, to show you some very, very simple things that we all do inside of the software, but just a different way of doing it that will cut down on your workflow. That does it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you got something from this video. This was directed more towards the beginners, but hopefully you advanced users out there can find something to take away from this video as well. If it helped you out, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and also drop a comment below. All of that helps to put this video in the eyes of some of the people that it absolutely will help. Also, if you have any more special type of techniques that you use in your software similar to this, please drop them in the comments below because I would love to take in some of you guys' techniques that you guys use whenever you're creating your beats as well. Before I get out of here, I just wanna let you guys know that I have now added to the arsenal of streaming things that I'm gonna be doing for you guys. I will now be streaming on Twitch. I have created a channel for Twitch. That way you guys can watch me cook up live on Twitch. This was requested by a few of you guys and I haven't done it simply because I've been concentrating on the YouTube live streaming, but now I have created the Twitch channel for you guys. So make sure you guys go ahead on, follow that. I'm gonna leave the link in the video description. I don't have anything on there as of yet, but once I get enough of you guys on there, I will absolutely go live for you guys and start cooking up. There's also a mobile app that you guys can download for Android and iPhones. That way you always stay in contact with the Twitch streaming. You can comment, you can chat, you can do all of that stuff right from your phone and you can watch me cook up live. That does it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the kid DZD, AKA the Drink Gang, live from the Dungeon Palace Studios. And I will check you guys in the next video. Peace out. Oh, man. Man.